friends. Make somebody feel warm and feel welcome this morning. Shall we pray? It's the fourth day of Spirit Life Conference. And Father, we thank you because four is the number of good news. We've not had any bad news. And this morning, we declare that the deluge of information, impartation, revelation, wisdom, and counsel we go to another level this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Father, every one of us need a good news in one area of our lives or the other. And this morning we secure the workings of the ministry of angels to deliver our individual package to each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Anoint your main servant, do your bidding this morning, cause everything about this meeting to produce a good news on the behalf of someone in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you because we are about to experience intentional living at a level we have never experienced before. We return to you all the honor, praise, and glory as we ask that you will have your way in Jesus' most auspicious name we pray. Come on, I said in Jesus' most auspicious name we pray. And on that note, I'm going to ask you to please join me as we receive the Lagos Metropolitan Gospel Choir. Would you put your hands together as we receive them this morning? Hallelujah! If you know that this is your season for impact, and you know that God is shining everything around for you, let me see you lift up those hands and shout out to God with a voice of triumph. Celebrate your God! He is worthy.
hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and tell them God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all I could ever imagine. Hallelujah. He's able. Come on. Put your hands together.
And if you came for more impact, and you believe that the able God is doing it already, clap your hands in this place and give your God a shout. Oh, hallelujah. I need you to look at your neighbor this morning. Look at your neighbor. Look at them and shout, hey! He's able. It's a good time to celebrate victory this morning. Everything you need is here, so celebrate with your days. We call him each way. Hey, listen. Cosa babire, cosi babire, for my soul on rubire. You say, Cosa babire, cosi babire, for my soul.
clap your hands and bless the name of Jesus. If you love him this morning, go ahead and tell him how much you do love him. Lord, I love you. I love you. I love you. Oh, everything in me gives you praise, God. All that's within me worships you. Oh, God, we love you. We love you, God. Oh, we give you all the glory, Jesus. Thank you for what you're doing in this place. Thank you for the miracles, God. Thank you for the healing. The ones you've saved have come to worship you. The ones you've healed have come to worship you. The ones you blessed have come to say thank you. Ooh, the ones you've healed, we're here to say thank you. If you fall under any of those categories, somebody lift up your hands and give him worship. We are the ones that you've healed. Let's raise it and say, Savior. Savior, Savior. We worship you, Savior. Oh, we call you, Savior. The one saved have come the ones you saved have come to worship you
girl you love has come to lift her praise. The little boy you raised has come to worship you. The mother that you made has come to give you praise for the fruit of the womb.
name above all names Jesus 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 How many of you know that there's power in the name of Jesus? There's power in the name of Jesus There's power in the name There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. There is power. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. 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 There's an army rising.
of the Holy Ghost. We are favored. Lift it up. We are walking in abundance. Walking in abundance. Moving with the speed. Moving with the speed. To the God of all impact, to the God of all power, to the God of all demonstration, to the God whose result is the splitting of the Red Sea, to the God whose result is causing spring to come forth of stone, to the God who speaks and his words resound in the places that the voices of men cannot reach. 
to the God who sees beyond the precipice of what man calls sight. To the God who is the everlasting from time past to time present and time to come. To the God who is the rock upon which this church, this assembly is founded. Father, we worship you this morning. We fail in our ability to weave words together to acknowledge you. We pray and we fall short in our attempt to raise up a worthy praise. The everlasting Father, the Agbani Lagbaton, the Kabiosi, the unassailable, the unquestionable. This morning, House on the Rock takes a few seconds to put together a worthy applause, a worthy praise, a worthy shout, a worthy acknowledgement, a worthy praise to the God who is intentional, to the God who is impactful, to our Redeemer and our Kingsman, our righteousness. If that's all you can do, if that's all the applause you can put together, if that's the praise that you can give to the one who has spoken for you, whose blood speaks for you, we worship you this morning. Blessed be the name of our Most High God. We pray that you accept our thanks and praises this morning in the name of Jesus. And the church said a big amen. amen. So I'll enjoin you to please keep standing for a little while longer. I am convinced that this person that I'm trying to bring up now is one of the four and 20 elders. His ministry, his psalmist ability is unprecedented. Unprecedented. Please, House on the Rock, join me this morning in a House of Rock appreciation as we bring up Minister Micah Stampley. Channels of my spirit, open up. I am with the Father. No limits and no boundaries. She calls unto thee. Channels of my spirit. I am with my father. No limits and no boundaries.
is a kingdom. Come on, you said, and the power and the glory. down now. Open your mouth. Speak it over your life. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Come on, lift it up. Open up your mouth. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. I give you permission to invade my life. I give you permission. So, I will worship you forever. Lift up your worship and say, I will worship you forever. Because this God is too Come on, say, hey. Oh, 
than that. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask that you please remain standing for just a brief moment. On board any ship or aircraft is a navigator. The navigator's responsibility is to ensure that the aircraft or ship stays its course. In this house, we have been blessed with one of the finest navigators who ensures that the destinies under his charge never veers off course. Not only is he a navigator, he is an aggregator. Not only is he an aggregator, he is a motivator. Not only is he a motivator, he is our pastor, our mentor. Others call him Pastor Paul, we call him Papa. House on the Rock this morning, please receive the Metropolitan Paul. Help me um, this Saturday morning and reach out to two neighbors and tell them there's nothing the devil can do about it. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. <laughs> do you sense his presence here mightily this Saturday morning? How many of you sense more than his presence, you also sense his glory? Uh, the distinction between the presence and the glory is that God is everywhere. But glory is when his presence is in manifestation. I believe that there's a miracle in manifestation in somebody's body right now in this building. There's a miracle in manifestation in somebody's business elsewhere in the country or in the world. There's a turning of favor in your favor. Somewhere where there's a decision that's about to be made, like it was done for Esther, where a conversation far flung from her audible reach was ongoing that would change her life forever and bring her into the lineage of Jesus our Christ. I think God is up to something so profound and so prolific in somebody's life. And if you want to give him some praise in advance, knowing that his word is very good and his credit is very good with us, then go ahead, clap your hands, shout unto God with a voice of victory. Give Jesus some glory in his house this Saturday morning. Somebody. Oh, I, I think you were doing that for the invisible God. But Jesus didn't remain invisible. He was the one that our forebears could touch and handle, could hold, could hear. Give him honor in his house. Is this not the Lord's house? Did he not pick you up, turn you around, heal your body, teach you how to run on? They put food in your belly, cloth on your back, roof over your head, vision in your heart, and then he installed himself in your being and in your body so that we can say with Paul, Christ in us, the hope of glory, so that when grief comes, glory happens anyways. When trouble comes, triumph happens anyways. 
go ahead and love him a little bit more. And lift your hands quietly now. And go, having gone beyond the gates of his courtyard and come into the very presence of his temple, reach down into your inner core. He's not only our Father who is in heaven, he is our Father who is in us. In the fullness of the Godhead. And just thank him for the repose of Jesus Christ in you, through you. Real Christianity can't be lived by any man. The only person that can produce real Christianity is the one who lives in us and lives his life through us. Give him glory for that. And, and before you reach to your seats this morning, I want you to love on about four or five people. If you squeeze them, keep it holy. If you shake them, shake their hand off. But let them know how glad you are to be seated beside such a powerhouse full of God's glory. And we're going to get blessed together some more. God is awesome. Allow me to discharge with some important housekeeping this morning. Um, and I can't wait till we get to the Word. If you weren't here last night, oh my God. The sage came to Lagos. And the Colossus, with the constellation revolving around him, did something here quite profound. The Yorubas would say, on dan kon le. There's no way to say it in English. <laughs> but maybe the way to say it is something happened in this room I want to acknowledge some important pulpit guests who have come from far and near and uh, um, in no particular order please acknowledge the esteemable presence all the way from Maranatha Covenant Ministries in the Middle Belt Plateau State the city of Joss Bishop Jonas Katun you're very welcome also from Jesus Dominion Mission in Wari, Delta State in the South South, Bishop Pius Odioko. Also a special mention from the City of Refuge International Ministries, Bishop Oscar Osai. A very special friend of mine from childhood, from the most notable and illustrious Grace Assembly here in Ikeja and in Leki, Pastor Femi Paul. You're most welcome. Good to have you in the house. Also, uh, Covenant Believers Church, Pastor Paul Ame, you're very welcome. And from the market sector, um, our former pharmacist and pharmacute pharmaceutical group, MD and CEO of MZOR, please acknowledge the presence of Dr. Stella Okoli, the most welcome man. And CFO of uh, Nine Mobile, Mr. Philip Oki again, it's good to see you in the house of God. From the Tuashe Royal Family and the MD CEO of uh, First City Monument Bank, uh, please acknowledge the presence of my cousin, Mr. Ladi Baloku. You're most welcome. You're most welcome. Also with us, another dear friend from childhood, the foremost insurance company in the country, a group MD of uh, custodian and allied insurance, Mr. Wale Oshi. You're most welcome, sir. Writing stories on the silver screen and on our gizmos that we may enjoy African content, African history, African stories told in the most wonderful cinematography. Please acknowledge the founder and proprietor of Dell York Film Academy, uh, based here in Lagos and many adjuncts around the world, including in Los Angeles, California. Mr. Linus Idahosa. Linus, it's good to see you. He's quite a phenomenon. Also, um, Lady Derry Agbaje, it's great to see you in the house of God again. And I'm particularly delighted about this couple. I, this, Fortuitously, fortuitously blessed to join them together as man and wife at a wedding ceremony somewhere in, in County Kent in the United Kingdom a few 
a few weeks ago, and they're very special to my heart. Uh, the young lady, as I would call her, she was the first donor to House on the Rock towards our first equipment 25 years ago. She emptied her bank account with all of, I think, 150,000 Naira then, which is a lot of money. And that's how we got our first monitors, our first microphones, and she's been a huge blessing to us in so many ways. I'm godfather to one of her children, and we've, as a family with her, we've weathered different storms together, and we deeply appreciate her. And I was profoundly astonished with joy when she told me that she had been suited by a dapper Don and Prince Charming. Uh, and I'll tell you his name. He's the Dia in Dia Fatimilei. And together, please acknowledge the most handsome couple in all of Nigeria, Mr. and Mrs. Kola and Bimbola Dia. Do stand. God bless you. You're very welcome. Also this morning we have the MD of, uh, or the managing partner of Coronation Capital. Please acknowledge the presence of John Opubor. It's good to see you, John. And also Mr. Bolaji Balogu, also from the Tuarche Royal Family, and the group managing director of Chapel Hill, Lagos. You're most welcome, sir. Good to see you. Cyrus members, you are reminded that uh, your presentation will hold tomorrow alongside um, the women to women in what we call the circle upstairs in the Metropolitan Chambers immediately following the service. And last but not the least, she's the most beautiful woman in the whole world and in the universe too. She's, she's passionate. She's a consummate wife, she's a doting mother, she's a phenomenal co-pastor, a daring preacheress. She's my still waters, and lay me down by her side, and my soul is calm from all its troubles and its struggles. Please acknowledge your co-pastor, uh, First Lady, and Pastor Ifanya Adifasa. God bless you. Oh, oh, you can do better than that. My, my fried eggs tomorrow morning are going to taste better. We're virtually there now. Traveling with our guest all the way from the United States, um, a very special man of God. And when I first met him a moment ago, he said, we, we really like it here, we don't want to go back home. And so, maybe we'll dare to christen him with a Yoruba name, or if you please, an Igbo name. Please acknowledge the, the presence of Pastor David Venable, all the way from Washington, D.C. in the United States. You're most welcome, sir. God bless you. Uh, and also with, with our guest, our patriarch, um, he's part of the family here in Lagos, He's, he's the giant of Dallas. Acknowledge the presence of Sean Smith. He's been with our bishop for over 24 years. Curtis Hairston. Marcus Dawson on the keyboards. Jay Hodges. Jay, where are you? Bless you, Jay. Uh, Antar Muhammad. And a gentleman who handles much of Bishop's work in filmmaking and in the enterprise. Mr. Derek Williams, a personal and dear friend of mine also. Please acknowledge his presence. This man is the sage's sage. He is Episcopal in his oversight, charismatic in his every endeavor, he is diligently sought after in high demand all around the world. That we have him in our midst and has been in our coast for this many days is a rare privilege for many, but it is our opportunity 
and the evidence of God's favor towards our city, our country, and to this house. When I first witnessed him 23 years ago in his house, the Potter's house in Dallas, I was riveted and completely blown away. He walked into Wednesday evening Bible study and picked up a microphone and for two hours we were spellbound, transfigured, transformed by the living word of God in his voice. At the time, he was known to most of us as the shepherd of the shattered, the bishop of the battered. His voice called people out of their cesspools, their dungeons, their brokenness, their pitiful pits, and launched them into a, into a significance in each of their lives. I am one such loosed man, and there are many likewise loosed women in the world because of him. Fast forward till today, he is now using more than the sacred desk as his pulpit through film and storytelling by film. He's become one of America's and the world's greatest filmmakers. CNN and Time Warner acclaim him as the best preacher in the world, and I certainly concur. <laughs> On the New York Times best-selling list, he has scores and scores of phenomenal titles that when you read them, you feel like you're in his living room at his fireside listening to the bishop's baritone himself. He writes the same way he speaks. We call him the walking poet. I've known him for 23 years. He's visited us at House on the Rock five different times and preached at least half a score times in this sacred desk. This morning, I present him to you not only as my father in the gospel, which he diligently is, and how he does that with thousands and thousands of us, I don't know. But I particularly present him to you as the oracle of the living word. When you hear from him today, you will hear more than his voice. You will hear the voice of the counsel and the prophetic will of God as he rises to his feet to deliver as what God has said. Please receive his noble grace, Bishop Thomas Dexter Jakes, as he comes. Clap your hands and give the Lord a praise, everybody. The, the illustrious and articulate senior statesman of this house um, has exceeded all expectations in his ability to articulate with linguistical excellence uh, a description that far exceeds the reality to which I stand. <laughs> Give it up for Pastor Paul Adafers and his lovely wife, Ephraim. Let's celebrate them. unequivocally a gift to the body of Christ, not only to Nigeria, but around the world. He has left an indelible impression upon us all. I remember as if it were a movie that Wednesday night, long ago in the old sanctuary, before we built the new one, when this gentleman came from Lagos, Nigeria, a place I had never been. And, uh, was in the service and after the service asked me to pray for him back in the hallway right near the exit door before we left and when i got ready to pray for him he knelt down on the floor and i laid my hands on him and strangely i had never been to africa before but strangely when i laid my right hand on his head in the spirit i saw my hand over the continent of africa and from that moment, from that initial moment, a pull happened in my soul to come to Africa. And I've been here many, many, many times since. But he was the John the Baptist that was the forerunner that brought me to the continent of Africa. Give God praise for him. Give God praise for him. Give God praise for him. Now you've been standing a long time. You can sit the whole rest of the morning. Some of you ladies with those high heel shoes on, they look good, but they're not church friendly. 
Yes. What you don't know is that men's shoes hurt too. I have my shoes rated. I have some shoes that are good for all day. I have some shoes that are good for two hours. After two hours, they turn against you. <laughs> so, so I can't imagine how you all stand in those heels. Give God praise for the women in the house. Amen. Beauty is expensive. <laughs> In the Gospel of St. John, chapter 2, verse 1 through 11, I have set my gaze upon a very familiar text through which I hope to extrapolate some concepts and ideologies that are beyond the historicity of the text, but relevant to the times in which we find ourselves right now. The task of the orator today is not just merely to exegete the text, but to take the text and make it applicable to the times in which we live. God has not live it, given us the living word just for us to quote it, but to read between the lines and to extract from it that that gives it life, which is the revelatory notions of the Holy Spirit. I will, I told you you could sit the rest of the time, but I was wrong. I want you to stand one more time for the reading of the word. <laughs> you can kick your shoes off if you need to. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servant, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were yet, there, there were set there six water pots of stone, six water pots of stone, six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. And Jesus saith unto them, fill the water pots with water. And they fill them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. Can you say amen? amen? Remain standing for just a moment. I want to talk to you from the subject, the mysterious wedding at Cana. The mysterious wedding at Cana. I think it is no small thing that Pastor Paul extended such an elaborate introduction to this couple who just got married. It was a witness and a confirmation to me that this was the word I was to share here in this place today. Are you ready to receive that word? Come now, Holy Spirit, and set upon these lips of clay that I might be endowed with the grace of articulating the word of God just to the degree that you would approve and allow. 
I thank you for your auspicious grace in which we stand today, humbled by the enormity of your passion toward something as puny as myself. Now, God, show your glory in that you can do so much with so little. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Wow. 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 This particular scripture is quite interesting. It comes to us out of the Gospel of St. John. It lays before us the beginning of the miracles of Jesus Christ. But to limit it to just the beginning of the miracles of Jesus Christ is an injustice of massive proportions. Because it also reminds us that our whole chronological understanding of Scripture starts with the wedding. And from Eve being pulled out of the side of Adam through a master surgical procedure, birthing her into the earth realm, out of the womb of the man comes the woman, and out of the womb of the woman comes the family, and out of the womb of the family comes generations. All of it was in Adam. And so from Genesis, when God reveals unto us that we will never be able to be fruitful autonomously, that the only way we can have fruit is through our ability to connect. The marriage is the covenant through which we have connection and God expresses his life-giving power through our unity, not our division. From Genesis chapter 1 to finally when Christ is brought to a mountain called Golgotha. And there they hung him high and stretched him wide until the sun refused to shine. And the earth got nervous and began to tremble. And the veil in the temple was rent from the top to the bottom. And the Bible says that the Roman soldier coming to Jesus, finding him already dead, a type of Adam being put to sleep. Then he pierced him in his side. Here we see a second surgical procedure. And out of his side came the blood and the water, which is called the New Testament church, which is us. We came through his side like the first man, Adam to the ending of all things eschatology in the book of revelations where we come to the marriage supper of the lamb the bible is sprinkled throughout with weddings weddings of all types of descriptions weddings of the patriarchs and weddings of the prophets weddings where prophets married prostitutes and weddings where men work for 14 years to earn the right to have a bride. The Bible is littered with weddings as an expressive device through which we might better understand who our God is. For our God is all sufficient. He is male enough to be our father and yet he is female enough to be the breasted one. And it takes us coming together to express his oneness. And out of us coming together to express his oneness, life emerges. Because we have described our God through our union. It is nevertheless ironic that we have come to the second chapter of the Gospel of St. John and stepped into a wedding a wedding of such massive proportion that it starts the miracle working power of Jesus Christ. And yet, as powerful as this wedding is, none of the synoptic gospels mention it. Not Matthew, not Mark, not Luke. None of them even refer, not one time, to the mysterious marriage at Cana.
And yet we know that they were there because it is recorded in the Gospel of St. John that the disciples attended the wedding with Jesus and say nothing about it at all. Isn't that mysterious? Isn't that odd that they would be witnesses, eyewitnesses nonetheless, to Jesus turning water into wine, and yet they say nothing about it. Only the Gospel of St. John mentions this particular miracle, and yet it is the impetus from which all other miracles will come, much like all humanity is inspired through the impetus of Adam marrying Eve, and all of us are either in the first or the last man, Adam, emerging out of two weddings, and the first miracle is a wedding, and yet Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Matthew, Mark, and Luke say nothing about it at all. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are preoccupied with proving in the early impetus of their text, can I take my time today? They are preoccupied with proving the authenticity of Jesus Christ and his right to the throne. They discuss his earthly lineage so that they might legitimize the authenticity to the fact that he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the mighty God and the I am of Israel. They prove that he is a descendant of David who we talked about last night. They prove that David moving to the throne has now sired a son through generational lineage that is eligible to inherit the throne because the switch of the Old Testament hit the light of the New Testament. For every light in this building is controlled by a switch. And what I preached about last night was the switch. And what I'm talking about today is the light. Do you hear me? And so John, on the other hand, totally opposed to all the other Gospels, does not preoccupy himself with the lineage of Joseph nor the lineage of Mary, but goes back beyond time and uh, all of seasons and dates and hours and goes back into eternity and says, in the beginning, oh, wait a minute, in the beginning, those are the same words used in the book of Genesis, in the beginning, God created in the beginning God he uses those same words in John 1 in the beginning was the word the psyche of God the strategy of God the thinking of God the mentality of God the intellectuality of God and the word was with God and the word was God what a high and lofty idea he is not tying Jesus to any earthly king or earthly patriarch or earthly man. He ties Jesus back to the divine so that we might understand that that which we behold is not just a flesh and blood but has appeared out of the mind of God that the mind of God has wrapped itself up in flesh and dwelt among us. That God took his thoughts and wrapped them in a body and came through the womb of a woman to obey the law that man that is born of a woman you see the woman is the legal entry from eternity into time and God decided not to break his own law but humbled himself and became born of that which he created stepped from eternity down into time and appeared to a virgin and appeared amongst us in Bethlehem and the word was made flesh the abstract was made concrete. The invisible was made visible. The intangible was made touchable. The thought appeared in matter and mass and form and muscle and cell and tissue and blood and bone and we beheld the wonder of his glory the only begotten of the father not just David of the father not just Abraham of the father we beheld the wonder of his glory Emmanuel God tabernacled with us God living amongst us, God 
dwelling amongst us, God walking amongst us. And from this high pinnacle of John chapter 1, whereby we see the divinity of Christ, the divinity divinity of Christ, we go from this high mountainous understanding of the theophany of God and the power of God and the presence of God and the spirit of God and the illustrious grace of God and the carnation of God himself from that in chapter one to a party in chapter two. From such a high incline to such a steep recession, how did we go from the oracles of heaven to people dancing in a party? The arc of the story between chapter 1 and chapter 2 is so graphic that these two chapters seem polarized one from another. One so divine that no flesh can touch it and the other so fleshly that we struggle to see the divine. If you wonder where I am, I am stuck in between chapter one and chapter two, showing the massive transition from eternity into time. If we were shooting a film, then chapter one would be scene one. Chapter two would be scene two, and it is so strange that we go from one scene of absolute holiness to another scene where we are at a party, listening to music, getting our groove on, and drinking wine. And yet the same God that is in chapter one is just as much God in chapter two. The same God who sits on the circle of the earth and has all power in his hand is the same God that got invited to a party that has last three days. Look at your God, his flexibility, his ability to be ambidextrous. He shows up in his divinity in chapter one. He steps into his humanity in chapter two without eliminating his auspicious grace. He is just as much God in chapter two as he is God in chapter one. Whether he is wrapped up in the arms of angels or whether he is surrounded by guests at a party, he still is who he is. The absolute one, the I am that I am, the invincible God, the shield, the buckler, the bulwark, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the kinsman, redeemer, the day star, the consolation of Israel, Elohim, El Shaddai, Jehovah Sikhnu, Jehovah Rohi, Jehovah Manna. I am talking about your God. The lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, he is the light and in him there is no darkness at all. He is wisdom, he is the ancient of days, he transcends time and eternity, he is the lion of the tribe of Judah and yet he is the itty bitty lamb of God. That same God who expresses himself in all of his divinity shows up in scene two at a party that looks like a club. In other words, he is so high that you can't get over him and so low that you can't get under him. In other words, he is the God of the eternal and yet he is the God of the earth. He reaches if I make my bed in hell, he is there. If I take the wings of the morning and ascend to the uttermost parts of the earth, he is there. Whether he is God in chapter one or a member at a party in chapter two, he never loses his essence his integrity, his ability, his majesty, his royalty, his power, his omnipresence, his omniscience, his omnipotence. He is still 
God. Whether he is wrapped in glory or wrapped in flesh, he is still God. Whether he is wrapped in divinity or put on a wedding gown, he is still God. Whether you're in the mountain or in the valley, he is still God. Whether he's on the Mount of Transfiguration or wrestling with a demon in the valley, he is still God. From your highest exaltation, he is God. To the lowest point of your existence, he is still God. You cannot outrun him. If you run out of the church and run into a strip club, he'll be waiting on you when you get there because he is God. He is always present. He is always there. If you went to hell, he would shake your ear and say, what are you doing here? Because there is no place that he cannot reach from everlasting to everlasting thou art God and beside you there is no other so I wonder in my mind as we embark upon the mission of discussing John chapter 2 why have we taken the time to mention this wedding normally at a wedding it is the bride and the groom that is heralded and yet we are at a wedding and denied the name of the bride and the groom it appears that who the bride and the groom are is not as important as who the guest is oh i would to god that we would get to the point that we would give up making our name great for making his name great wouldn't it be something if we were less conscious about whose name we called and remembered more aptly whose name we call upon? It is odd that we are at a wedding and we never find out who the bride and the groom is because we are preoccupied with the guests. It is so mysterious. The wedding at Cana. Mysterious, mysterion, apocalypse. It is the Greek word apocalypse where we get the word unveiling. To unveil something is, to, is not to create it. If I unveil this box, I uncover it. When you see a mystery, a mystery does not mean that the thing was created. It just means that it existed before it was revealed. We are then at the mysterious wedding at Cana so that we might begin to have a revelation of who our God is by the law of first mention. Can I go deeper? The law of first mention says that the first mention of a thing sets a continuity of how it is defined throughout scripture. So if the blood is redemptive in Genesis, it is still redemptive in Joshua. It is still redemptive in Revelation. Whether it's Rahab holding out a red cord or whether it's a woman with a bleeding womb touching the hem of his garment, the blood never changes character from chapter to chapter to chapter this continuity expresses the strategy of God God doesn't get in the middle of the plan and change his mind if it costs blood in Genesis it costs blood on Calvary he never changes his nature and his order and so why are we having this discussion that the first miracle Amidst all the debauchery that goes on in his generation, all of the crime and confusion, all of the perversion of the Roman Empire, all of the seductive behaviors of their orgies and their mannerisms, of all of the things that he could have dealt with, the power of the Roman Empire, which had besieged the children of Israel, of all of the things that he had to deal with, the blind, the halt, the lame, the deaf, the dumb, of all the things that he had to deal with. You mean the first miracle, the first time that God exercises his power through flesh is because we're at a party? 
and we have run out of wine. Is that really worthy of the master's attention? He who raised the dead has been asked to do something as trivial as solve a wine problem. For his introduction, his introduction into his messianic power and authority, you would have thought that he would have done something more spectacular. Like call somebody out of a grave or heal some leper or open up some blinded eyes. But for his first miracle, he provides a miracle for something that really is not a problem. <laughs> He stretches the muscles of his divinity for an inconvenience. Your God is so detailed that he involves himself in things that are not necessarily a crisis in your life. He is so caring and concerned about you that he cares enough about your inconvenience to extend his power to a circumstance that is neither life-threatening nor life-altering. And yet he involves himself in that which is mundane, though he is masterful. We are at the mysterious wedding at Cana. Can I talk about this a little while? And what starts this miracle is that in the history of, of the Hebrew people and the Jewish wedding in particular, it lasted for several days. So when the Bible says it is the third day, they have been going at it a while. And they have run out of wine. They have not run out of money. They have run out of wine. They have not run out of pageantry. They have run out of wine. They have not run out of decorum. They have run out of wine. You must understand, we live in a world that has a whole lot of things. They have money. They have wealth. They have intellectualism. They have power. They have governments and majesties, and they rule and they reign and they build buildings and skyscrapers and all kinds of majestic things but don't you dare envy them because this scripture tells us they have no why do not do not weaken the power of this statement, they have no wine, because this is the statement that provokes the move of God. God will not move until you recognize that those who seek to intimidate you may have a lot of things that you do not have, but I came to tell you this Saturday morning that they have no wine. They may have a company, but they have no wine. They may have a position but they have no wine. They may have authority but they have no wine. They may be your supervisor but they have no wine. They may be more attractive but they have no wine. They may be more influential but they have no wine. Mary rushes in the room and tells her child, Jesus we got a problem. They're having a party. But they have no one. She comes to Jesus to confess that they are dancing without wine. They are partying without wine. They are laughing and celebrating and touching each other and enjoying each other. And it looks like they have it, but they have no wine. <laughs> they got a name, but they have no wine. They got influence but they have no wine. See, some people, maybe some in here, you're so impressed with your accomplishments, but the truth of the matter, it doesn't matter how much you have accomplished if you have. 
they have no why. And I'm going to talk about three points and I'm going to be out of your way. And the first one is going to be time. Because Jesus says to the woman, my hour has not yet come. This is the mention of time. First, it tells us that they had been there three days. And then secondly, he tells her, my hour has not yet come. And I am awed by the fact that Jesus has such a sense of when and not just what. Because most of us know what, but we don't know when. He is more focused on when than he is what. Because when it comes to time, time is a hint of who God is. If God were a geometric sign, he would not be a line. Because if he were a line, he would have a beginning and an end. So if I were a geometrist, I could never draw a line and say, this is what your God looks like because a line has a beginning or end. If I were a geometrist and I were to draw out of geometry something that was like God, I couldn't draw a line. I would have to draw a circle because a circle has no beginning and it has no end and my God has no beginning and he has no end and my God is a circle somebody say God is a circle God is a circle that's why Ezekiel called him a wheel in the middle of a wheel two things spinning a wheel in the middle of a wheel, God is a circle. He's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. That's why we give rings at weddings because it is an expression of eternal love. It means I won't run out of love. I'll never stop loving you. There'll be no beginning or end of it. I'll love you alive. I'll love you when you're dead. I'll love you when you're gone. And this ring is a symbol of the enormity and the longevity of my love. It's a circle and God is a circle. He's a wheel spinning in the middle of a wheel and because he is a circle he creates circles. Watch this. When God got ready to speak out of his circlehood, he said, let there be. And everything that came out of him came out a circle. He said, let there be light and a round sun begin to burn. He said, let there be earth and a round earth begin to move. And it was a wheel moving in the middle of a wheel it had to be a wheel in the middle of a wheel because that's what God is and you can teach what you know but you can only reproduce what you are stay with me I'm warming up I'm gonna get there in a minute you can teach what you know but you can only reproduce what you are I could teach Mandarin but I'm not Chinese I could teach Mandarin, but I can't have a Chinese baby. I can teach what I know, but I can only reproduce what I am. God is a circle, so when He reproduces, He reproduces circles. He, oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. He reproduces circles, and circles are cycles, and cycles are systems, and systems are seasons. And the evening and the morning was the first day. Because all that defines time itself, Micah, is the rhythm of the circle. It is the rhythm of the circle that determines day and night and winter and summer. It is the rhythm of the spinning of the circles that creates time. And if you opened up an old-fashioned watch and took the face off of it, you would see all that man did was imitate what God did, was put wheels in the middle of the wheel, and the spinning of the wheel determines the time. And so when you're talking about time, you're talking about rhythm, because rhythm and time are synonymous. Rhythm, time, 
has a rhythm and rhythm has a time and God has a rhythm and he put a cycle in the earth and he put a circle in the sun and he put a cycle in the woman and the woman has a cycle because she's a circle and her cycle determines her ability to give birth because God is the master of time. Are there any sisters in here? God has a circle in you. He has a cycle in you and the cycle is determined by time because God has a rhythm. Oh, wait a minute. God has a rhythm. God has a rhythm. I just felt my wrist. My wrist has a pulse. Means blood has a rhythm. I'm alive because there's a rhythm in my blood. If I feel my chest, it feels like a drummer lives in my chest because my heart has a beat and my heart has a rhythm and the rhythm produces the cycle so that the blood that's in my finger ends up in my tongue because it's all making a circle the same blood over and over again so when God created me he created a cycle and a circle and a system and a rhythm and God has a rhythm and if you're gonna walk with God you gotta walk in rhythm because God has a rhythm and he moves in a rhythm if you catch the rhythm nobody can curse you if you catch the rhythm nobody can stop you. If you catch the rhythm, nobody can block you because God has a rhythm. And once you understand the rhythm, you know when is your time. No devil in hell can stop you because you know when it's your time. No demon can oppress you because you know when it's your time. Woman! My hour has not yet come. I know exactly when I'm supposed to do this. You are asking me to show myself out of season. Oh my God. I knew he was a God in season. But this text reveals to me that he is a God out of season. That sometimes God will move in spite of the season. So you can't say I'm too young for God to use me. And you can't say I'm too old for God to use me. Because if God says you're going to have a baby, wrinkled knees and all, you're going to have a baby. If God says you're going to sire a son, impotent or not, he will give you life. God told Abraham, you're going to bring forth a son. And he waited till his body was dead. And he waited till there was no Viagra. And he waited till he couldn't get a prescription. And he said, I'm going to show you how powerful I am. I'm going to resurrect your organ. I'm going to give I'm going to give you a seed. I'm going to give you a seed. So the seed that passed through Abram uh, was from God. Uh, how do you know that? Uh, because thousands of years later, Jesus would come forth and say, I am the seed of Abraham. I know it was Jesus. Because when he hit Sarah's dead womb, he quickened it and brought it back to life again. I know it was Jesus because he came in due season, in due rhythm, in due time, 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 in due time. God has a season that he's going to bless you in, in due I know some of you, the devil told you that you missed your season. And that's why you got to understand the marriage at Cana. Because sometimes even when it's not the season, God will do it anyway. Oh my God, I feel a praise about to break out in this room. Because God's going to bless some people out of season. In the middle of a drought, in the middle of a famine, in the middle of a depression, in the middle of a declining economy. If God gets ready to bless you, nobody can curse you. Oh, it's not my hour, but I'm still going to do it. I need you to help me preach this message. To 
punch nine people and tell them it's time, it's time, it's time, it's time. It's time, it's time, it's time, it's time, it's time, it's time. You cried long enough. You labored long enough. You waited long enough. You did the best you could with what you had. But it's time. It's time. You've been dry. You've been without wine. You've been without help. You've been without power. But God said it's time. It's time. It's time. You've been smiling when you weren't happy. You've been grinning when you had no joy. But God said it's time. It's time. Your weeping is going to turn into dancing. Your crying your morning is going to turn into celebration it's time it's time weeping may endure for a night but tick tock tick tock tick tock joy cometh in the morning slap somebody and say it's time it's time for Nigeria to rise it's time for Lagos to rise it's time for the house of the rock to rise it's time If you don't own this, you might as well leave now. If you don't sell in your mind, it's time. Then nothing else I got to say is going to help you. If you keep walking around with your head down, feeling sorry for yourself, waiting on somebody's benevolence to come along and get you, you are not ready for me to preach to. I want to talk to somebody who understands that it's my time. It's my season. It's my hour. I have rotated long enough. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tick tick, tick 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 tick, tick 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 tick. Holy Ghost said it's time. Holy Ghost said it's time. Somebody shout out to God. My God. Can't you feel it? Something is about to happen. Don't you know it in your spirit? Something is about to happen. Haven't you been holding on when the devil said let go? It's because something is about to happen. You've been waiting on it, but here it is. Something is about to happen. I would have fainted, but something was about to happen. I almost died. Something was about to happen. It's happening right now. 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 I say 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 it's happening right now. Somebody's overlading right now. Somebody's about to give birth right now. Say it's happening right now. It's happening right now. And then there is the mysterious conversation that occurs at the wedding. Mary walks in the room and she says, they have no wine. And he basically says, no, my hour has not yet come. And she acts like she's deaf. <laughs> she doesn't argue with him. She doesn't try to convince him. She doesn't speak back to him. She just turns to the servants and says, whatever. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Not just think it, do it. We talked about thinking yesterday. We're moving from thinking to doing. I'm not 
not going to keep it in my head. I'm going to bring it in my life. I'm going to do it. I'm not just going to shout about it. I'm going to do it. I'm not just going to preach about it. I'm going to do it. Slap your neighbor and say, do it. It might not make sense, but do it. You might not have all the capital, but do it. You might not have all the support, but do it. Slap your other neighbor and say, do it. What is Whatever he tells you to do, do it, do it, do it. Let somebody say, do it. If you're going to build it, do it. If you're going to be it, do it. If you're going to move, do it. If you're going to buy it, do it. Somebody shout, do it. If you're going to preach, if you're going to sing, if you're going to marry, if you're going to have a baby, if you're going to have a business, if you're going to write a book, if you're going to open up a company, do it. Do it. On your mark, get set. I want to go sit down. I want to go from time to talent. This woman, this woman, and y'all go like this. This woman has the talent of leadership. <laughs> you can't do nothing with her. She took control of the whole room. She assessed the problem and found the solution and executed the plan. She ignored the rejection. That's a sign of a leader. When you can find the problem, find the solution, execute the strategy, and ignore the distraction, you are a leader. I don't care what they say, I don't care what they think, I don't care how they act funny. Leadership is determined by your ability to bring about change. Some of you have the talent of leadership. It is a talent. It is not a degree. <laughs> I have hired people with more degrees than a thermometer. They had the degrees, but did not have the talents. <laughs> Just because you majored in it, doesn't mean you're talented in it. Leadership is a talent. My grandbaby was, we were in my church and we were taking pictures and my grandbaby came in the room and, and, uh, and it was dark and I didn't know where the lights were. He's got a, be a scientist to know how to turn the lights in our church. I didn't know where the lights were. And so we were in the dark, but we wanted to take pictures. And up under our pews, we have flashlights in case of an emergency, we can exit the building. So she reached up under the pew and she got a flashlight and she said, I'm going to hold it while you take the picture. And I said, baby, don't you want to be in the picture? She said, no, Papa. I don't need to be in the picture. I'm just going to hold the light. Some of us are so busy being in the picture that we don't hold the light. Real leadership never seeks to be in the picture. Real leadership turns on the lights. When you want to be on the stage, you working for somebody. You think the most powerful people are the ones on the stage. You're wrong. The most powerful people are the people who own the stage. You got to decide, do you want to be on it or do you want to own it? Do you want to be in the picture or do you want to hold the lights? Mary held the light. She walked in the room. She took charge of the situation. 
She described the problem. She found the solution. Too many people that we appoint into leadership come back to us with problems. Why would I hire you to bring me problems? I had problems when I hired you. I hired you to bring me solutions. I don't need to pay you to describe my problem. I need to pay you on your ability to solve my problem. God is about to make you the answer to somebody's problem. Y'all didn't hear what I said. God is about to make you the answer to somebody's problem. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Nobody ever sends for a problem. They send for an answer. Slap your neighbor and say, I'm the answer. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm an answer looking for a problem. The only reason people don't appreciate you is because you have an answer where they don't have a problem. If you find your problem, they'll appreciate you because you are their answer. Make yourself an answer and you don't have to be jealous of nobody. When you are an answer, you don't have to be intimidated by anybody because answers are always in demand. So she said, whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. And walked out. She said it and walked out. She didn't say it and wait to see. She said it like a boss. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. The talent of leadership only shines when it is painted on the talent of servitude. There is nothing worse than being a great leader and having no servant. If you're a leader and you have no follower, you're taking a walk. <laughs> so you must find somebody who, has, who is as talented at serving as you are at leading. We don't talk about the talent of servitude. We have all kinds of conferences on leadership and we try to make everybody a leader. But my question, Your Honor, is that if everybody is a leader, who's gonna follow? Who is it that finds fulfillment in supporting the vision? Who is the person who is anointed to make sure the dream is executed? Or are we contorting ourselves into things we are not so that we will be recognized by people who only respect the talent of leadership when the talent of leadership is nothing without the talent of servitude. The talent of servitude. There's a grace to serve. There's a grace to serve. Some people got a job in servitude that need to be fired. They bring you the food, but they don't have the grace to bring it. They throw your plate down on the table. They act like I just got to do this. They don't understand that serving is an art. It's an art that requires a charisma. It's an art that requires a grace. And if you don't learn the art of servitude, I question your art of leadership. Because the Bible said that when you have been faithful over a few things, I will make you ruler over many. Until you have been faithful over the few, you cannot be ruler over the many. So don't tell me you're going to get great when you get appointed. If you're not great now, you won't be great later. If you're not great singing in a room with 10 people, you won't be great singing in a room full of 10,000. If you can't preach to five, you can't preach to a million. It makes no difference if all of you walked out and there was nobody left but three, I could still keep right on preaching. 
because I am not preaching in response to you. I'm preaching in response to the word he put down inside of me. Don't let your audience determine your ability to serve. That means you can't wait till you get around important people to serve because a real good servant can serve when I walk out of the room. I'm tired of people who can only serve when I'm looking. Oh, y'all ain't going to talk back to me. As long as I'm looking, you're a great servant. But when I walk out of the room, you disappear. I need somebody to serve this church when Pastor Paul is not here. Anybody can serve him when he's here. But we have a generation now that says, is Pastor in town? Now, if pastor is in town, I'm going to be on my post. When the reality is, I need you on your post even more when I'm gone. What do you think faithful is? What do you think faithful is? Faithful when I'm looking? I ought to be able to walk out the room and everything function as if I was there. Because you're a good servant. God will exalt you when you serve with excellence. You do it with dignity. You do it with class. You pride yourself on how professionally you do it. And you don't walk away till it's done. Whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. He told me to preach. I didn't have a crowd. Nobody knew I was a preacher. So I started preaching in the woods. I started preaching in the woods, walking down the path behind my mama's house, preaching to rabbits and birds and sparrows. I would preach in the shower to the soap and the rain and tell them to come to Jesus, your time is running out. You can't stay in your sins any longer. Though your sins be red as crimson, I'll wash them to the white as snow. I'll be in the shower preaching because whatever he tells you to do. Do it if you gotta look like a fool. Do it if it seems crazy. Do it if you don't understand it. Uh-oh. Do it if you don't agree with it. Uh-oh. Do it if it don't make any sense. Uh-oh. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Because when God tells you to do something, it's going to seem crazy. They asked for wine. And Jesus told them to go get water. If they weren't gifted servants, they would have said, they don't want no water, Jesus. They want wine. But when you are obedient, you do what you are told. Go get the water. Now, point three, they had to have the tools. There are, there are six decanters. Fill them up with 20 to 30 furlings, King James Version, actually means 30 gallons of water. Put water in it and fill it to the brim. Can you imagine being a servant and you're out there filling up the containers? See, you cannot do the mission if you don't have the tools. You cannot fulfill your mission if you don't have the tools. Let me show you something. For three months, every time I close my eyes, God has showed me a toolbox. Hammers and screwdrivers and pliers hanging outside of an open toolbox. No comment, no word, just a toolbox. At the end of three months, God started bringing millionaires and billionaires into my presence. One man walked up to me in a meeting and he said, I want to give a billion dollars a year to whatever you want to do. I said, huh? 
Now, I'm 62 years old. I have had some great testimony, but I have never had a Negro walk up to me and offer me a billion dollars a year to whatever I wanted to do. Wait a minute. I Googled him real quick. <laughs> and he had it. And suddenly God said to me, I put tools all around you. The tools I give you are the relationships that you build. Once I give you the tools, I am through with the task. It's, it's one thing not to have the tools. It's another thing to have the tools and not know how to use it. I prophesy to somebody in this room, you have got the tools for the miracle you need. You are right in the midst of the tools that are going to break every yoke and every struggle in your life. Everything that God is going to do is going to come from something you already got. Oh, y'all don't hear, y'all don't hear, y'all don't hear, y'all don't hear, y'all don't hear. For every miracle in the Bible, God used something that was already there. He, when the prophet came to the widow's house, he didn't bring the miracle, he unveiled the miracle. He said, get that handful of meal in your house. It's already in your house. Another prophet said, I'm going to use the pot of oil in your house. One judge took the jawbone of an ass and killed 10,000 Philistines. I'm trying to tell you what you need to break your curse is already in your life. You have been walking past it because you see it in the natural. And in the natural, it's a handful of meal. In the natural, it's a pot of oil. In the natural, it's a jawbone of an ass. But when God gets in it, it becomes super, supernatural. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I wonder, did they hear me? What you've been praying for is already there. I wonder, did they hear me? God's going to use something that you already got. You have already been exposed to the person that God is going to use to take you to the next dimension. It does you no good to have the tools if you don't recognize how to use them. When God gives you the tools, he's finished. Jesus did not draw the water. He just told them where the tools were. There are six containers over there. They've been waiting on you to recognize them. They are part of your ceremonial washings. They are part of your norm. But I'm going to do something abnormal with your normal. I'm going to do something supernatural with your natural. I'm going to do it. I left them there for this moment. I made them like you for this moment. I gave you favor for the dokonde shatake odobo kosha. I gave you favor for this moment. I let you meet them for this moment. I open up the door for this moment. You've been walking past it every day and didn't perceive it to be valuable, but I'm going to use something you've been walking past to give you an unexplainable miracle in your life. I need 60 seconds of crazy praise. <laughs> You got 30 seconds left. You got 20 seconds to open your mouth. You got 10 seconds to leap up and down and give God the glory. You can reach and tell him I got something.
something. I got something. I got something. The devil's been trying to tell me I didn't have anything, but I got something. I've been walking around it. I've been stepping around it. I've been moving around it, but I got something. I got something for a breakthrough. I got something for a change in my life. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. So we got the time, we got the talent, we got the tools, we got the tools. If we could build a church, we could build a mall. If we could build a church, we could build a university. If we could build a university, we could build a country. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying to you. One can chase a thousand can chase 10,000. Now wait a minute, that math is flawed because if one can chase a thousand, two ought to chase 2,000. But God said if you'll hook up with people, I'll give you an exponential increase. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I came to tell you, you've gone as far as you can go by yourself. The next part of your life, God's gonna give you a hookup take you to the next level exponential increase supernatural increase crazy increase in your life who am I talking to I said who am I talking to is why we have to have the gift, the talent of servitude because they obeyed what they didn't understand. <laughs> they obeyed what they didn't understand. They heard Mary say they have no wine. This is about wine. The prayer was about wine. The answer was water. God's answers don't look like your question. You got down on your knees and you asked God a question. Early that morning the answer came, but the answer never looks like the question. So you got to be obedient enough to obey it even when it looks opposite of what you asked for. Like you could get a prophecy like Moses gave Israel, said it's going to rain bread down from heaven. Israel shouted. In the morning when the dew fell, this strange stuff was laying in front of the tent. And they said manna means what is it? It doesn't look like what I had in mind. That is your problem. What you had in mind. What you thought he was going to do. Who, he, who you thought he was going to use. How you thought it was going to happen. The answer will never look like the question. The question was wine. The answer was water. So there I am with these heavy water pots made out of stone. One pot is so heavy it's going to take several men to lift it with 30 gallons of water in it. I drag it down to the stream and bucket by bucket, I start filling it with insignificance. Everything that I have told you up to this point is not the mystery.
These are just the flowers I picked along the way. <laughs> to the mystery. Are you ready for the mystery? They drug the water pots down. They filled them with water. The weight of it alone requires faith and obedience to carry something that's this heavy and looks wrong. See, you got to carry something heavy that looks wrong because it is not what you had. God will marry you to somebody only to discover that they are not. He will send you to minister to a place and you'll say, are you kidding me? This is not what I had in mind. You're trying to build a business and all of a sudden the economy goes to hell. And you say, this is not what I had in mind. And it is heavy. The Lord told me to stop and minister about the weight of greatness. Greatness is heavy. Greatness is heavy. People who have never done anything great thinks that once they do something great, things will be lighter. Wrong. Greatness is heavy. Normal is not controversial. If you don't want controversy, just be normal. Just be regular. People don't really bother you until they suspect greatness. Greatness is heavy. I know, Shaddai. Hey, come. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost in here. The Holy Ghost said that there are people in this room who are strained by the weight of greatness that feels insignificant. What you are dragging doesn't seem important. Came all the way down here to get this water. This water is heavy and it's not what I had in mind and it's not what I prayed for and it's not what I wanted. I didn't go to school to work this little job this isn't what I studied for. This isn't what I labored for. I didn't start a business to struggle like this. I prayed for wine. And I'm weighted down with water. Here is the mystery. We know for sure it was water when they filled the vessels. Six vessels, 30 gallons of water. We know for sure, 180 gallons of water was what was carried away. They took them from the vessels and poured them into serving the canters. They poured the water into serving the canters and carried the serving the canters into the party. And when they poured it, the transformative power of God took the water and turned it into wine. But I don't know when he did. It was water in the stream. <laughs> it 
was water in the decanters. It was water in the serving vessels. But by the time they got to the table, somewhere along the way, God turned the water. And God said, if you can carry insignificance and all the weight of the disappointment of him not doing what you thought he was going to do the way you thought he was going to do it. If you can go ahead and take that insignificance and get ready to serve it as if it were significant and call those things that are not as though they were. If you can go ahead and get dressed for a party you haven't been invited to. If you can get in a room you don't belong in. And if you can stand feeling out of place and awkward for a little while, somewhere along the way, by the time you get poured out, the blessing is in the pouring. The blessing is in the pouring. The blessing is in the pouring. I know it's in the pouring. It's got to be in the pouring. It's always been in the pouring. Whenever Jesus served something, he always changed it. Like the two fish and the five loaves of bread. We had an accounting report on what we had in inventory. All we have is two fish and five loaves of bread. He said, give it to me. And the Bible said he lifted it up and blessed it, even though it was insignificant. And then as he blessed it, he broke it. And then as he broke it, he served it. Somewhere in the breaking of the bread, he began to multiply it. Whenever God stretches you, whenever God pours you out, whenever you're at your limit, that's when the transformation occurs. Some of you haven't got your breakthrough because you haven't been stretched. Get your neighbor by the hand and pull on them. Pull on them by the hand. Pull them. Pull them right now. That's what God is getting ready to do. He's getting ready to stretch you. He's getting ready to pour you out. He's getting ready to get you out of your comfort zone. Oh! Stretch me, Lord. Stretch me, Lord. Pour me out, Lord. Use me, Lord. This is crazy wine. This is unlike any wine they had ever had before. The guests came to the bridegroom and said, this makes no sense. I'm drinking it. I'm tasting it. I'm smelling it. I'm swirling it. I'm tasting it. I'm smelling it. I'm swirling it. I'm this makes no sense. Most people serve the good wine first. And then after the guests are drunk, they won't know it anyway. <laughs> Get the cheap wine out and save the money. But you, 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 Wonderful you, amazing you, spectacular you, omnipotent you, you reverse the order, you save the best. I'm almost finished. If we can settle on this, if we can settle on this. I will have done something good. If you and I can agree that you have not seen your best day. Not yet. You have not laughed your best laugh. You have not enjoyed your best blessing. I know what you had early was good, but it will not compare 
share with what he's about to do in this season of your life because God never serves the best up first he always he always he always say the best that's a tokosa he goes this is your season this is your time just when the devil said it's not gonna happen God has saved the best the enemy has been telling you things are not gonna get better the enemy has been telling you you have nothing to look forward to. Should I go to the Lord? Yes, Lord. There are some of you that have even thought about suicide. And let me tell you the foolishness of suicide. People who commit suicide do it over their past. You'll kill yourself over your past, but you never killed your past when you kill yourself. You kill your future. Suicide is the death of your future. So you're killing something you don't know over something you already survived. is in front of you your best is in front of you everything behind you was preparing you for what's in front of you your yesterday was the schoolmaster that prepares you for your tomorrow it will not look like what you had in mind, but receive it anyway. It's going to be heavy. It's going to be difficult. You're going to have to sweat for it, but it's still going to happen. You're going to want to give up. You're going to want to throw it down. You're going to want to walk away from it and say, this is not what I asked for. This is not what I had in mind. This doesn't make any sense. This is too much for me. But God told me to tell you, don't drop it now. Oh, don't drop it. Don't drop it. Not now. God said. Lift your hands. It's going to get heavy. But lift them high. They're going to get tired. But don't give up. It's going to look like you wasted your time. But keep them up. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Everything you asked him for. It's heavy. It's heavy. But here he comes. He are done. He are my son. 
here it comes it's coming it's coming I saw it with a symphony behind it here it comes here it comes receive it receive it you have not seen the best oh you have not seen the best you survived the rest now God gives the best now get ready for it it's not gonna look like what you had in mind but you can't fight it you can't wrestle with it you can't get bitter about it Receive it! And this is how he starts his miracles. By pouring you out. You've been closed in. You've been self-protective. You never let people see who you really are. You're scared to death to show yourself. But the power of God is in the pouring of God. And God said you're coming into a season where he's going to pour you out. And it's going to be vulnerable and it's going to be scary because you're going to think if I get poured out, they're going to find out I'm really not wine, I'm really water. God said, don't worry about it. When I get through pouring you, I'm going to turn you into what you need to be for what I'm going to give you. God said, I have not forgotten you. Oh, he told me to walk right over to you and tell you, I, I didn't forget you. I didn't forget you. It come to Something you said to God. God sent me here to answer. I did not forget you. 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 You felt forsaken. You felt forgotten. But the Holy Ghost said, I did not forget you. He shut the Lord. By the time you get there, I'm going to turn you to wine. Oh! stretch I know it's heavy I know your arms got tired I know your arms are tired a stretch ah. stretch it's coming we are poured out like water. We are poured out like water. Yes, Lord. We are poured out like water. Yes, Lord. We are poured out like water. We are poured out like water. <laughs> God keeps bringing me back to this. You have been too closed too sealed, too intrinsic. You locked yourself up to protect yourself, but you stopped yourself from the transformation I wanted to give yourself. God said, you're coming, God said, you're coming into a season that you're gonna be poured out. And you're not even gonna know when it happened. But as he pours you, ay, 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 he's going to change you. When he pours you, he's going to change you. I know you're working, but come here, photographer. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Yeah, this ain't about the pictures. Give somebody the camera. This ain't about the pictures. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. This is about you. God said, I'm going to pour you. Ah! God said, I'm going to pour you. I'm going to pour you. I'm gonna pour you. I'm gonna pour you. There's something you dreamed that seems ridiculous, but God said, as you pour yourself out, I'm gonna make room for you. There's a dream in your spirit that seems impossible, but God said, I'm gonna pour you out. Oh! 
And by the time you get there, by the time you get there, you're going to be enough. You've been wondering, am I enough? Do I really have what it takes? God said you're enough. Because I'm about to pour you out. I'm about to pour you out. Who am I talking to in this room? I'm about to pour you out. 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 And the change is going to be a mystery. If I'd have made you wine sooner, they would have consumed you. <laughs> if I'd have made you wine any sooner, they would have consumed you. So I let you appear like water so they wouldn't bother you. And I saved you for such a time as this. And I'm getting ready to pour you out. And your latter days shall be greater than your former day. Do you receive that? I hit you. I hit you. I hit you. I hit you. I saved you. I saved you. I reserved you. I let them not notice your gift nor recognize your power. I hit you. You look like water because I hit you. Oh! But I'm about to show up in your life. I'm going to show you who you are. It does not yet appear what you shall be. It does not yet appear what you shall be as blessed as you are. Oh! It has not yet appeared what you shall be. I'm getting ready to pour you out. You know something else is there. You know something is missing. You know something is there. Ah, God said, I'm getting ready to pour you out. I'm going to pour you out. I'm going to pour you. You ready? I'm going to pour you out. I'm going to pour you out. You don't get to hide it. You don't get to hold it. You got to release it. You got to let it go. I'm going to pour you out. I'm going to pour you out. I'm going to pour you out. You can't stay safe. You can't stay hidden. I'm getting ready to pour you out. I'm getting ready to use you like you've never been used before. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Even in this season. Even in this season. God said you're not finished yet. I'm going to pour you out. 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 I will bless the nations through you. 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 Lift your hands. Open your mouth. Shout unto God. Just you and him. Shout unto God. Thirty gallons of water, six pots. Three times six is eighteen. You're enough. You hear me? You are enough. You are enough. You are enough. You, are enough. you will not run out. You ran out before, but you will not run out this time. You will not run out. Ah! Ow! You will not run out. You will not burn out. You will not give out. You will not run out. You will not run out. My God, I feel glory in this room. I feel like God is talking to somebody in this room. If the Lord is speaking to you about specific things in your life that he's going to do, then 
get personal with God and give him your personal praise right now. If he talked to you this morning, if he spoke to you this morning, if he poured into you this morning, if he told you something this morning, if he revealed himself to you this morning, if he opened up your spirit and opened up your heart and opened up your life, I feel God. Antar, I want to, I want to sow into this moment an eighteen hundred dollar seed into this moment. Six water pots, thirty gallons. My end shall be bigger than my beginning. My latter day shall be greater than my former day. I have not climbed my highest mount. I'm 43 years of preaching. I'm 62 years old. And I haven't had my best day. I have traveled around the world. I have sat with kings and princes. I have not had my best day. I have counseled presidents. I've flown on jets around the world. I have fine dined and done all the things that people do on TV. But God says that greatness is not determined by who you met or who you touched or where you went. There's something else he's going to do. My great moment might be you. Imagine that. Imagine that. After being in the Oval Office of the White House for three different administrations over the last 20 years, my greatest moment might be you because in all that I have accomplished he did not send me here to lead you he sent me here to serve you so wait a minute stop worrying about who am I and figure out who are you that God would send me to serve you. If you were not great, I wouldn't be here. The one thing I don't have to waste is time. And there's something about somebody in this room that's important enough. That God sent me here to serve you. What, 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 what is it? What is it that made Blind Bartimaeus scream? He sensed a moment. What is it that made the woman with the issue of blood crawl? She sensed the moment. What is it that made Mary of Bethany break the alabaster box and anoint his feet? She sensed the moment. Sacrifice is always based on sensing the moment. This is a moment. Every time I look at you, I, I hear God talking to me about you. About you. Your history declares that all that have come down through the years thought that the riches of Africa was in its minerals. And some thought it was in its oil. And some said it's in the gold, and some said it's in the diamonds. They were all wrong. It's in his people. And God saved the best for last. 
it's time for you to show them your value, your worth. You feel like water, but when God gets through using you, you're going to taste like wine. I want you in this moment to get a sacrificial seed. There are some of you that can give what I gave. If you can match what I gave, do that. There are some of you that's absolutely impossible, but on your level, on your level from the balcony to the back row to the front row, I want you to sense this moment. I don't know what $1,800 is in Naira, but you do. And I know, I know many, many people cannot sow on that level. And if you cannot sow on that level, he's not talking to you. And don't you feel bad about it. 651,648, 648,000 now. For somebody that's absolutely crazy, it's absolutely insane that he's not talking to you. But on your level, I want you to sacrifice. If it's a tithe of it, if it's a tenth of it, I am going to sow into you, into this moment. And then, you got me ready? Bow your heads. Bow your heads. Don't change your spirit. No, 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 no. Don't change your spirit. Because it is the glory that's going to bring the increase. And somebody, when you pour out, it's going to come back to you. It may only be 10 people or 20 people that can join me or 100 people. I don't know. But if God is calling you out and you're believing God for something that's so crazy that that, that, that amount of Naira would not touch it, then it's not a harvest, it's a seed. If you need a transformation, can I, can, I, can I do this? If, if you need a transformation, I don't think I've ever received an offering. And all the time I've been here, I'm going to receive this offering, not me personally, but I'm going to bless your seed you sow into this conference. Because this is your moment. And on your level, I want you to sacrifice. If there's anybody in here at the level to sacrifice with me, come forward quickly. Come forward quickly. If there's anybody that's on the level to sacrifice with me, come forward quickly. Step out of the crowd. Step out of the pack. I'm believing God! To turn some things to increase some things. If you're able to sow on the level I'm sowing on, come forward. If you're not able to sow on that level, get your best level wherever it is, wherever your best level is, get it in your hand because this is the moment, this is the place, this is what the woman with the issue of blood crawled for, this is what blind Bartimaeus may have screamed about, this is the moment, this is the moment when Mary walks out the room and says, do it. Whatever he tells you to do. Ah! Do it. I need a thousand people that don't have nothing but a praise to send it up right now. Just send it up right now. Send it up. That's all you got. That's all you got. And you're not going to give that. Open your mouth up. Open, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Everybody else, get your best seat in your hand. Get your best seat. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. You've got to get in on this. Something is about to happen. 
Something is about to happen. Come in tight because there's more coming. There's more coming. Three hundred and forty-eight. Isn't that what you said in Naira? Six hundred forty-eight thousand Naira. I don't know who this is for. The Holy Spirit is nudging you, and you normally don't give like this, and you're skeptical. And the Lord said, "Wait one minute." When that minute is over, I'm going to move on. Don't meet me in the parking lot. You have to flow when the anointing is flowing. And you got 50 seconds to move. The wheels are turning. The wheels are turning. Time, time, time. 30 seconds to move. Time. 22 seconds. If you're coming, come now. 18. 12. Get to walk. Step over the devil. Step over every excuse. There is something you need God to do that only God can do. You can't pay for it. If $1,800 could pay for it, you could go do it. If your Naira could pay for it, you could go do it. But you're so into it. I believe God for harvest. I want everybody to lift your seat up, whatever it is, all the way to the balcony. If it's 100 Naira, lift it up. I don't care how small it is. Lift it up before God. On my level, I trust you. Ah! In my situation, I trust you. Lord, what, whatever we lift up, whatever size it is, is insignificant compared to what we're believing you for. But we're asking you to turn this water. <laughs> into wine, into opportunities, into positions, into ownership, into businesses, into companies, to turn it around, Lord, until blessings are coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west, and somewhere as I'm being poured out, something is about to happen. I speak increase over this house. I speak harvest over this house. I speak abundance over this house. I speak miracles over this house. I speak transformation over this house. Your best is in front of you. Your best is in front of you. It's not behind you. It's not behind you. Your best is in front of you. I don't care how old you are. Your best is in front of you. Hallelujah. Lift it up high and shout unto God with all your strength. I am going to lay my seed on this altar and every one of you that came forward I want you to follow me in laying your seed on this altar I want you to press through the crowd and lay it on the altar like you're sowing a seed into the ground you're laying it right where the word was preached I connect with this word I want the ushers to serve everybody else I want you to serve everybody else. Buckets, whatever you pass, pass it. Make it easy for the crowd. Just the people who came out, I want you to sow it on this altar. I come into agreement with Bishop. I stand in agreement with Bishop Jakes. 
hallelujah there's a mystery in me that's about to be unveiled there's a mystery in me that's about to be uncovered there's a mystery in me that's about to be shown i stand in agreement right now property is transferring <laughs> Yokes are being broken. Something that's been held up, it just broke loose. It broke loose through your obedience. Whatever he tells you to do. Do it. Do it. Do it. If you gotta crawl, do it. If you gotta scream, do it. They tried to shut Bartimaeus up, but he kept on hollering because he recognized this was his moment. This was his moment. One moment. The Spanish say, uno momento. One moment, uno momento. Uno momento. God says, I'm gonna give you a moment. Come through the crowd. Press through the crowd like the woman with the issue. Thank you, Jesus. Usher, serve the people in their seats. Thank you, Jesus. Tell your neighbor, this is my cycle. Oh, you sound like you're dead. Say, this is my cycle. This is my season. This is my time. This is my talent. This is my tools. Hallelujah. When I go down from this place, I'm going to reassess every tool in my life. I'm going to look at things differently in my life, people in my life, opportunities in my life, favor in my life, things I've been walking past and didn't notice. God will always use something within your reach, something that you've been exposed to to give you something that you have not been exposed to. And I decree and declare abundance. <laughs> that out of the cloud the size of a man's hands a great abundance of rain shall come. The mystery of the wedding at Cana. It's going to be a mystery how he bless you. I said it's going to be a mystery how he blesses you. It's going to be a mystery how he blesses you. Don't get it twisted. This is not my offering. This is not for me. This is not about me. I'm good. I'm fine. This is not about me. I don't go around the country raising money for me. This is a moment If you're giving on your phone, there's information on the screen. If you're watching online, you need to tap into this moment. I see a lot of church people, but where are my radical people? Radical people, would you get up on your feet and take over this room for about 30 seconds? Just take over. A blessing, 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 a blessing. Miracles and miracles after miracles after miracles after miracles after miracles after miracles. Door after door after door. Deed after deed. Contract after contract. Miracles, miracles. Financial breakthroughs. Doors open. Yeah, debts paid. Mountains move. Mountains move. Mountains move. In the name of Jesus, I can't hear you. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. We're gonna break it in the spirit. We're gonna break it in the spirit over every seed. Every seed. We're gonna break it in the spirit. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me till demons tremble. Till hell gets nervous. Open your mouth like a trumpet. Lift up your voice. Shout out to God. Shout out to God. Closing. How many of you feel like you heard from God? 
If you're glad you came this Saturday morning, make some noise and praise the Lord. Now, I need your help with something. Because the Lord receives the cheerful giver. And it's important that we receive this offering with joy. The deacons are going to come and receive it. And I don't want you to stop praising God until they have received it all. Can I count on you? Are you ready? Has God been good enough to you for you to give him the praise? Come on, deacons. Open your mouth and stop praising him right now. Shout a victory shout like it's already done, like it already happened, like it already went through, like the door just opened. Shout out to God! Oh, oh, he on the most shire, he on the most Thank you for your patience. There's somebody in this room. The enemy has been trying and trying and trying to get you to give up. But the word came to you today and said, you will not take your life over your past. You're going to celebrate your future. I felt the spirit of suicide break. If it broke off you, run up here right now. Run up here right now. If it broke off of your life. If a spirit of depression, a spirit of suicide broke off of your life, run up here. Don't walk. Run up here right now. I want to shout the victory with you. Come right now. I don't care what people think. I don't care what they say. I don't care who looks funny. I don't care what your title is. I don't care what you got on. I don't care how much money you make. I don't care what you look like. It breaks. It breaks. It breaks. It breaks. It breaks. It breaks. My future is greater than my past. 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 Somebody shout at the God. I wanted to come. I wanted you to come so I could look you in the eye and tell you, the enemy would not be trying to kill you 
if you didn't have something valuable. Stay right there. Look up. No more looking down. No more looking down. Your future is bright. Your future is bright. You are talented. You are gifted. You are anointed. You will succeed. You remember I told you today. You remember I told you today that nothing in your past will stop your future. It's time to hold your head up. It's time to get your song back. It's start to get your strategy together. You will not die like you lived. You will not end like you began. He whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Hallelujah. You are young people. Most of you are very young people. The future is yours. The future is yours. The reason you have been hurt so bad is because you have so much promise. The enemy was trying to destroy you before it comes forth. Out of your belly. Out of your belly shall flow rivers, rivers of creativity, 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 rivers, gushing rivers coming out of you, ideas and concepts, connections healing and restoration families and opportunities is coming out of you the enemy tried to get you to kill your future he wanted to kill your future he showed you your past but it was your future he was after nothing that they did to you will stop god from blessing you Nothing that you've been through will stop God from blessing you. It's going to be a mystery. <laughs> He's going to turn water into wine. <laughs> I'm looking at actors and entertainers, leaders and singers, builders and business leaders. I'm looking at new apps and new ideas and new coding and new technology, new science, new possibilities, new creativity. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody's getting ready to start a business on your phone. God's going to use something you got to give you something that you do not have. Do not let the enemy kill your future over your past. Graphic arts designers, come forth. Stylists, come forth. Fashion designers, come forth. Music writers, come forth. Hip hop, come forth. God is gonna do a new thing in you. A new thing in you, a new thing in you. Let me tell you something. You are smart. You hear me? You are smart. You are gifted. And you are black. And you are beautiful. You hear what I told you this day? You will never hold your head down another day in your life. You are somebody. When you walk, hold your head up. Straighten your shoulders. Walk in a room till you make people curious as to who you are by your stance alone. When you walk in a room, make them curious to know what you know. Because this day, this black man from the hills of West Virginia 
came all the way to Nigeria to tell you who you are. You are wine, not water. You are wine, fine, elegant, Cabernet, wine. And he has hid you for such a time as this. I'm gonna tell you this quick story. I was uh, in New York City and I was sitting around the table with some executives from Goldman Sachs and they were all black and they were all from different parts of the world. And there was this one brother there who's now got a doctorate degree from Princeton University and works with, Go I think it was Princeton, works with Goldman Sachs and he came out of an Ivy League school and we were talking about technology. And he said, you will never believe my testimony. He said, what got me into technology was tennis shoes. I said, tennis shoes? He said, I was a poor black boy from Nigeria. He said, and I started hacking people's orders to get the tennis shoes, only to find out that I could code. And when I found out I could code, I didn't need the tennis shoes. And what God meant, what men meant for evil, turned to good. He said, I went back to school. I got my degree. And now I'm an executive at Goldman Sachs in New York City. He said, but I am a Nigerian. It does not matter where you start. It matters where you finish. You are smarter than you think you are. Everything anybody has ever done, male or female, there's only two ways they got it. They either prayed it up or they read it up. Either they got it from God or they read about it. If you can pray and if you can read, you can get it. And if you can't read, you can learn. If you can learn reggae, you can learn anything else. If you can learn hip hop, you can learn anything else. If you can learn how to dance and learn how to move, there is nothing wrong with your brain. There is nothing wrong with your brain. And there is nothing wrong with your skin. And there is nothing wrong with your nationality. And there is nothing wrong with your gender. And there is nothing wrong with you. The enemy tried to trap you early because he is afraid of you. He attacked you early because you have potential. Nobody robs somebody who's broke. If you didn't have something, he wouldn't be after you. So I want to settle this with you today. You shall not die, but live. You shall not die, but live. You shall not die, but live. Lift your hands, I'm praying for you specifically. Father, I pray that these would never be the same again, that they would never be the same again. Lord, I pray that there'd be fire in their belly, that there'd be an anxiousness to go after the things of God. I pray that they would leave this building and do something and be something and go after something and reach for something, whatever it takes. Lord, you be the wind beneath their wings. They will never be the same again. They will never be the same again in Jesus name come on and help me praise him everybody everybody everywhere help me praise him every I said everybody everywhere help me praise him God has blessed you far beyond your biggest imaginations in this service. I want you to give God the highest praise for Bishop T.D. Jakes. <sighs> I've followed 
to him for many years and I've never heard anything but an excellent sermon or message but this was more than a sermon or a message this was God himself talking to you and just using a man called Bishop Jakes as the voice piece the mouthpiece how many of you agree to that after a service like this you really want to go and process and push the seed deeper down into the soil of your heart so that no fowl of the air will steal every single prophetic word you need to get the tape and get it quickly and if it doesn't come through when you want it to hotrmp3.com hotrmp3.com you'll find it on there soon enough glory to god rehearse it meditate on it till it sits down and becomes a part of the fabric of who you are your time your talent and your tools it was remiss of me i want to close the service we have a round table do not recognize, recognize in my early acknowledgments uh, the youngest general ever in the Nigerian army, in the person of General Tunde Rees, retired. You're most welcome, sir. And also evangelist Ide, the founder of Christ, the ever-present ministries here in Lagos. Tomorrow morning service starts promptly at 9, but it will be foolhardy to come here at 9. You want to come a lot earlier because uh, I'm not sure there'll be any seats even in the overflow. At this time, one of our conference speakers will come. In a moment, one of our conference speakers will come to share the benediction. To ease your egress from the facility um, and to help us prevent congestion on the roads because of the flood, uh, congregants, we would plead with you to follow the directives of the rock police um, and they will guide you in a way that will ease everybody's egress um, and as you heed that the fowls of the air will steal your word yeah. please put your hands together for the episcopal over i can the bishop wayne malcolm as he shares a greeting with a brief benediction thank you Let's all stand, please. And I'm going to ask you to look at someone near you and say to them, You must be special. <laughs> say, You must be important. And then say, you must have been chosen for God to send that man to you. He could have been anywhere, but we are special. Before I say the grace, let me let me say that a moment like this must be marked marked in your life with a memorial with something that embeds this moment in your soul there are those of you who wanted to participate at that high level but didn't have it to hand today. You can still do it tomorrow. Can I hear an amen? amen. Let's mark this moment in Jesus' name. Amen. And now may the amazing grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with us all now and forevermore and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i shall dwell in the house of the lord forever 
and ever. Shalom. God bless you. See you tomorrow.